Okay, hello everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Mario Corchero, or Mario Corchero. Uh, and uh, I'm Spanish. I work at Bloomberg at the Python infrastructure team. The slide seems not to work great. Um, I do more things on Python, so feel free to chat with me if you want to have a trip to Spain. I love traveling around Spain. Uh, if you don't, ha don't have any questions to ask, we can chat afterwards. afterwards. And we, uh, and I, I, I wrote, uh, yeah, if you wonder exceptional exceptions, it's all about the clickbait, okay? I had to come with this title so it got uh, through the uh, proposal selection. Um, but basically, on my daily work, I, I create libraries for the rest of the companies. And quite often, when you're creating this kind of like middleware libraries, you're basically just calling other, other libraries. Uh, or wrapping other libraries, and you need to find a way to translate those exceptions, right? And even if, you know, raising an exception sounds really easy, uh, we're gonna see here that there are many ways to capture and raise them. If you're a beginner to Python, uh, you'll get from this talk some kind of like a really quick deep dive into all the syntax around uh, how to handle exceptions. If you're an intermediate Python developer, I hope that from this talk you get some like good practices and how to do things in a nicer way and maybe discover some, uh, some things. If you are ex an experienced Python developer, I have some uh, hidden gems and small tricks uh, for niche uh, cases so that you learn. If you are a core developer that knows everything about uh, Python and exceptions, a question outside, okay? So uh, let's start. <laughs> it's very for you, Christian. So, uh, you know, raising exception is easy, right? You just do raise exception and you put a message on it. Uh, and whilst that's in many times the case, there are all the situations where, you know, you might wonder like, okay, how should I capture the exception? Uh, what does exactly the else mean and what does it do? Uh, what, what goes into the final and how does finally work? And how you should handle the exception if you're already with an exception uh, block. So this is the only image in the whole slides. So get ready for a lot of code. So first of all, uh, you just try, how do you capture an exception? You do accept, you put the name of the exception that you want to capture here. Easy, right? You might have multiple of them, so what's gonna happen is that in order, as a waterfall, this is not a switch statement, okay? It's gonna go one by one evaluating them. So what's ha happening here is that uh, if an exception is raised in here, it's gonna go to the first one, it's gonna check if the exception that was raised is of this type, and then it will go, if there's a tuple, it will go one by one, and then you have this kind of check, which is basically gonna, gonna catch all the exceptions. Easy. Everyone knows how an exception uh, get cut, right? But did you know that you can also have like any other name to catch a, to catch an exception? For so, for example, you can you can save an exception in a variable, and then you can just you know do an accept and save it here. At the end, this is just any other name, so it's basically the same as just putting an exception there. But because this is being evaluated, you can also have a function that will return you the exception that you want. And this function is actually going to be called every single time that an exception falls through this. You can even have a variable that doesn't exist. That's not the problem, because unless the exceptions fall all the way down until here, you won't, get any, you won't get the name error that will result in this code. So that means that if you have this code, which basically means that this is a bug, uh, you will never see it, unless an exception is raised that does not match these two first cases. Scary, right? Use a linter. So uh, something interesting, finally. Uh, you have probably seen finally. All, all it does when you do a try, uh, try accept is that whatever you, whatever you do here, whether, whether the exception is raised or not here, finally will always be executed. So that means that if you have code here that does not raise exception, finally it's gonna be executed. If you have code here that will raise an exception and whatever happens in the exception clause, it will still be executed. You also have else, which is confusing for people coming from other languages that don't have a construct like that. What else does is the code would be executed if no exception is thrown, more or less. Like, unless you have something special here like returning or something like that, else will be, always be executed unless, there, unless uh, an exception is thrown. If any exception is thrown, uh, the else code won't be executed. You might wonder, why would I want this? Why wouldn't just put this line within the try? And the thing is, it has kind of like two main things where you might want to use the else. One is, it conveys different meanings. So uh, you can see here that if you were to read the code as if it were text, you can say that you are trying something. If it fails, you handle it some one way. And if it doesn't fail, and that's what the else does, you want some other codes to be executed. Additionally, uh, whatever you have in the else won't be, like if, if an exception is written in the else, it won't be handled by any of the exceptions for. So it, it also changes how, how the, the code behaves. So, uh, 
you know, we have seen try, accept, else, and finally. So you might want, uh, if you wonder about the order of how this goes, this code, for example, will you know, go through the try, print one. There's no exception that has been thrown, so not, this is not executed. Then you go through the else, print three, and then you go through to the finally, because we always execute the finally, and you print four. And it's like, my, everyone knows that, right? OK, what does this return? <laughs> right? <laughs> this is really interesting. Like, uh, so what's going to happen here is that actually all those returns are not going to be executed. Uh, what's going to win here is the four. But the same wouldn't happen with the else. Like, if you return something for the try, the else would, would not be executed. If you wonder about how all this works, the best way to see it is take a Python 3.8 build and just run this dot this uh, on this function. And you can see there's, there's, a, a, there's a new instruction called uh, setup finally that you can, uh, you can look for, and you'll understand how this works. It's on a high level model, finally always get executed, and whatever happens in the finally will win always. OK. So something important that touches my heart is logging exceptions. If you are logging an exception, there is something like, uh, I don't know when it was, but the first time I saw this beautiful parameter, which is X, in, uh, X info, it changed my life. What it does is it, uh, it allows you to log everything about the exception together with the log that you passed. So that means that you'll get the trace back and the exception itself in your logs or whatever you configure in your login stack uh, together with the message you put. It's, it happens so often that you log an error and you, put, uh, you use X info that there is a function called uh, uh, exception that will basically do that for you. If you do login.exception, you are logging on error and including the traceback and, and the exception. But know that you can, you can use xinfo with any other level. Like, you can have any level in the, uh, on, on the logger and just pass xinfo, and that will log you the exception as well. So you don't have to log on error just to get the exception traceback. OK, and now, so, I don't know if you, you know, you import this, you see this, like error should never pass it silently. Well, yeah, so you see this error should never pass uh, uh, silently, and then you go like, you know what, when there is an error, I'm going to go crazy about it. So I'm going to log an exception, I'm going to raise it again. I hate this, okay? There is, there's good people, bad people, people that eat babies, and people do this. Don't do it, okay? <laughs> I'm going to follow you if you do this. Why is it bad? Because if you do this, you just moved from having one error to having two. Like now, if there's going to be a log error that you have to handle, because if there is an error in your logs, you need to action it. And there's going to be an exception being, uh, being passed to the user. When you're doing a library, uh, you're taking control away from the person that's calling you if you do this. And I know, I know. You're saying, but Mario, what if I have no, no, don't do it. And OK, there is a situation if you know, no, don't do it. Like, look, if, if you do this, OK, and then I'm calling you, and now I, I catch your objection, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? You give me the options now. So if I, I, I have to pass it. If I consider this not to be an error, I'm going to get an error in my logs. If I, if I think that this is an error I want to log it, I'm going to get two logs. And if I, if I now automate, for example, alarming on my logs, I'm going to get two reports to me, right? This is a pain. And this, this happens, like you can, there are many libraries that have this thing. There was, uh, there was one DB API of a, of a proprietary database that, uh, and this is why it touches me, that, that had, uh, basically, if you try to insert a key, it was, it was raising an exception, telling you that it was an integrity error, and then giving you a nice exception you can handle, but it was also logging a warning. Now, because I was writing a library that was using that library, and I needed to do what's called an absurd. Basically, you're trying to insert, and if the, if the thing is there, you just do an update. All my users were getting a warning just because of that. So if you are going to give an exception to your users, please don't log an exception. The, your users already have the information enough to handle it. Don't, don't put an error on their message. There's no one situation when you're writing uh, like a web server we can discuss. But if you know, if you want to like, discuss with me for real long, we can chat about this. Uh, happy to have this discussion afterwards. But I haven't seen any situation where it's useful to log an error and raise an exception. OK. So how do you log an error? If you don't want to use the exception where you get the tries back and all that information, something else you can do is you can just include the, uh, the error. Quite often, uh, if you are not, uh, if you don't have a lot of knowledge about how uh, string interpolation works, you see a lot of people just doing the person the H, S. What this is actually doing, this is just calling the string representation of the, of the exception. That's usually not what you want. Okay? What you want is to get the wrapper of the, of, the, of the exception. 
Why is that? Because as you saw before, if you do percentage chess, you're just going to get the, the message of the exception. If you do percentage R, you're going to get the actual exception. If instead of having this line here, you were calling something inside which has a lot of code, how do you know on Earth that this is coming from a key error, right? There's no way to know it. You can see it here. It's, there are even worse situations. You can see here that you know, if, you have, if I have an exception, you try to print uh, the string representation of it, it's just a string. If you have the wrapper, it's an exception. This is especially bad uh, when you try to print it because, look, value error and key error, they are just going to print whatever they have inside. If you use the string representation of them, you're just getting the content of it. And if you have an exception with, end, with nothing in it, you're just going to get an int string. So it can happen that you're using a library that has like custom exceptions that don't have any argument on it. They just have, you know, the important part of it is just the, uh, the name of the exception, and you're, you're missing all that. So when, whenever you're, log, you're logging, probably you want the representation of the string, of the exception. Something interesting about exceptions. Uh, when, you have, uh, um, when you have an accept clause, uh, the variable in the accept does not leak the scope. Uh, compared to with statement or for loops or things like that. This is, so you know, what I mean is like if you try to use that name afterwards, it will just give you a name error. Like that doesn't exist at all. Uh, this came with Python 3 exceptions. And the reason is that the exceptions has an attribute that has, that's a traceback. The traceback has the, the stack frame. And if the name will still to be there, the, st the stack frame will have again the exception, will create the cycles, and will keep your ob objects alive for unnecessarily for longer time. I think. You know, that's funny, so I just wanted to add it. Uh, now, how do you raise the exception? You can just raise an, an instance if you create it, or you can just pass the name of the class, and it will create an instance for you with no arguments. I think I've never used this one, but hey. Now, that's easy, but then, again, the tricky one is this one. You'll see a lot of code like this, usually if it's in Python 2. Uh, there is some code, you do an accept exception, and then you raise an exception. If you do this, what you're actually saying is, I failed to handle the exception, OK? What this is meaning is that there was an exception when handling the exception. And if you see uh, the message that you get out of it, it's actually saying that. It says, during the, during the handling of the web exception, another exception occur. You get both exception here, but you are probably not transmitting to your users what you really want to mean. Because there are three ways that you can raise an exception when you are already handling an exception. So one of them is you might want to just rewrite the original exception. You can just do that by doing race. This is going to get the exception that you're handling and just bubbling up. Um, you don't need to capture the name or anything. It will just get it. This is really useful if you just want to log or get some metrics or uh, whatever you want that you just want to you know, like snoop a little bit there, but you don't want to change anything. And uh, um, whenever you see the traceback, you're going to see that um, only the original exception, or only the original play where it was raised is included, uh, but not this one. So this is like it never happened. Another way to do it is you can re-raise for an exception that is already uh, that you're captured into a name. So remember, because they, they don't leak scope, you might need to save it. Uh, this is, for example, if you have uh, you wanted to send a request, you have multiple URLs, you want to try with all of them, and only if all of them fail, you want to raise one of them, right? So you can just save it into one variable, and whenever you raise it, uh, both the original place and that uh, and the one where you re-raise will appear. Um, but yeah, it's just a different way to say to to, to raise an exception. But now, if you want to take an expression that you are handling, and you just want to say, hey, there is this error that's happening, and I, want to, and I just want to tell you that it's, you know, I'm blaming this other exception, right? So it's, it's not me. So uh, you want to raise the exception, and you say that the original one is this one. You can just do raise from. And what this is going to do is this is going to tell you, well, this is going to tell your users that this, was, this, was the, uh, this is the exception that I'm raising, and the cause of it is this one. It, this also uh, adds a uh, dunder uh, cost to the exception that you can, uh, you can, like the users can check just to know what's the, what was the original exception. And then the last one, because the raising exception is easy, right? You can just suppress altogether origin, uh, the original exception. This is useful if you don't want your clients to, the clients of your library to know uh, what are you using behind the hoods. So basically, you can do this, and the original exception will be elided, and they will only see the new one. As you can see here, because we do raise from none, um, the, the only, the new, only the new exception that we are raising is the only one that they can see. Ooh, that's a lot about the raising exceptions. Uh, ooh, another interesting thing. Uh, please don't raise not implemented. That's not an exception. What you probably want to raise is not implemented error. If you do this, you're going to get a type error. This is going to raise, yes, but not what you want. 
So if you see, I, I once saw a test that he was checking that this was racing, but it was just capturing an exception. It's like, yeah, it's racing, but not what you want. Because this is what ha what's happening here is that race will always need to take something that is an exception, and you've passed something else, it's just gonna shoot a type error. Uh, then the same goes about capturing them. If you do an accept or not implemented, this is gonna raise a type error. It's not only not capture the exception, it's racing a new one, okay? Who does that, right? Well, look at the hits in GitHub, okay? Like, <laughs> the not implement is a whole different thing that is usually used whenever you are Im implementing your own uh, like compression methods and things like that for your class. If you want to mark, a, uh, if you want to say that the method is not implemented, you just raise not implemented error. Okay, uh, some uh, more small things. If you want, if there is an exception that's raised on a thread, you're just gonna get this uh, beautiful thing in STDR, right? And uh, um, if you just want to be to be able to propagate the exceptions from threads into your main threads, you can just uh, use something like, for example, futures. And uh, when you do futures result, it will come to your main thread. I know this bites many people, so that's why I include it here. Why not? And uh, let's have a quick look through the exception hierarchy. And the main two exceptions you probably want to know about is base exception and exception. So base exception is the base for all the exceptions in Python, okay? But that's usually what you don't want. What you usually want is exception. So exception is the base for all the exceptions that you might want to handle and, all, and the base for exceptions that all the libraries define. If you go to base, base exception, you can see things like system exit or keyboard interrupt. Those are, that is basically that, you know, if you, for example, uh, hit Control C and you try to interrupt the program, what's happening? It's that it's just racing uh, one of those keyboard interrupt. So if you are capturing base exception or all exceptions, you are effectively preventing users from hitting Control C, which is quite annoying. Um, same goes with system exit. Basically, if you do a system exit, it's kind of just racing a, an exception that system exit. If you capture that exception, you can basically prevent the program from exiting. Please don't do that unless you really know what you're doing. It can happen that in some situations you might want to capture that because you might want, to, again, to log or something like that, but then you immediately just re-race. That's okay, but don't just try to silence or handle those ones. Some of the interesting exceptions you might want to know about is uh, probably import error or you know, index error or key error, error whenever you're looking up things in dictionaries or, or vectors. And then you have value errors, which is kind of like the, you know, if you have an argument that you cannot handle or type error for the wrong type. But you can have a look, this is like a minimized version. There are mo many more uh, exceptions in the standard library. Uh, you can have a look, it's all documented here. Okay, so what does an exception has? You have an exception in your hands, what do I do with it, right? Uh, you might be looking to the dot message attribute. If you are doing that, please stop writing Python 2. You have only some more months to move. Uh, what you have nowadays is uh, arcs. So whenever an exception is created, all the arguments is saved in this uh, beautiful attribute and you can just retrieve it. Uh, you also have traceback, which is the original traceback. Um, this is useful if, for example, you want to create a new exception and you want to patch the new exception with the exception of the old one and things like that. Usually you don't need it, but it's there if you need it. And you know, whenever you're creating an exception, remember always to inherit from exception and not base exception. Why? Because, yeah, I know, I know, okay? I'm falling in this too. Base exception has this name, right? It's like, mm, feels like a base class I want to use. No, okay? It's a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. So because if you do this, the users might then try to capture base exception and then capture exceptions that they should not be capturing, okay? So always inherit from exception. This is in documentation. Uh, always inherit from exception. This is in documentation. Uh, what else? Some really cool trick. Even if you don't do anything in the init, the arcs are gonna be saved. What's that magic? Look it up. It's basically the new. Uh, you can define your own exception hierarchy if you want. There are many libraries that do this. Uh, good examples are request, uh, SQL Alchemy. Uh, there's also uh, another library that I should not pronounce because we're in a German-speaking uh, country that's really famous for doing requests as well. And I know I won't pronounce it properly. It's like something like work, Zerg. Uh, but yeah, you know the one I mean. Uh, look, look those up because they are really nice. They have really nice, well-designed uh, exception hierarchies. Um, whenever you are uh, creating your exceptions or raising exceptions in your library, it's quite, you can start perfectly by raising like standard libraries exceptions, like value error, value error and things like that. And then by using multiple inheritance, you can just create your own whole own hierarchy and then remap those ones into internal ones. And that won't break users. 
Because if you, if you don't use multiple inher inheritance whenever you're doing that, that's a backward compatible change if you, if you have a different base. You can see there are uh, situations where people use multiple, exception, uh, multiple inheritance for exceptions in both the standard libraries and well-used extended libraries. Um, okay, some people come from C and they want to use error codes. I come from C++, don't worry, I feel the same pain as you. But uh, uh, in general, don't use error code unless, I would recommend don't use error code unless you are basically just remapping them from other systems. So for example, you can see there are some exceptions that will have an error code, but this, this is for example because they are coming from, they're basically remapping the HTTP error code into exceptions. But this, still, they are creating a specific exception for each error code. And that's great because that allows me to basically uh, have accept clause where I can say what exact exception I want to, to, to catch, right? Otherwise, it's like uh, the Pokemon catch, right? You catch them all in a single exception and then you differentiate in error codes. Uh, don't do that, please have specific exceptions. It's so much easier to, to work with. So we still have time, so I'm gonna go, well, in very quick, uh, uh, catch, uh, whenever you catch exception and you try to raise them, think what you want to do. Like, how do you want to transmit the previous exception? If you want to elide it or inform it or whatever, and be very, very careful about how you log in. But there's extra content. So, because you want to go home and say, and, uh, I learned something new, there is something new being released in 3.8. You have an unraceable hook that you can set to whatever you want. And that's basically going to be called whenever. Uh, there's an exception in the interpreter that uh, cannot be handled. Uh, at the moment, those were just going to STDR, but now you'll be able to handle them. I was speaking with uh, Victor Stinner, which implemented this too, and maybe that can also be extended to, uh, to, to be used for, like, if you have to raise also unraceable exceptions. And then you have a threading accept hook. So basically, this is a, this is a different way to, to solve the problem we saw before, where you have an exception being raised in a thread and you will want to handle it, you can just set this and this is going to be called. You might be wondering, what is that little bar, right? So that's PEP 570, that's positional only arguments. Uh, you have the author of the PEP there, so you can ask him about that. Uh, it basically means that everything be, uh, before that uh, it can be passed only as a positional argument and not, not as a keyboard. It's quite cool. Uh, then we have, uh, if you care about uh, your, the lifetime of, of your objects, or if you really care about memory, this is a really nice trick. So whenever you, if you, for whatever reason, are capturing an exception and then you're gonna erase it with a name, this leads to a cycle. And what I mean with that is that this exception that you're erasing here, it's gonna have a, a dunder traceback. That's, you know, it's gonna have the stack frame and then it's gonna uh, have, again, this, uh, this exception. And what that's gonna do is when you erase it, it's gonna keep alive all the objects in the stack until the next garbage collection happens. That's a pain in many situations. Like you can see that you know, there are places in the standard library where you really want to avoid that, and there might be situations in your libraries where you also want to avoid that. To do that, you do this beautiful code, and you just do, uh, you just do try when you erase it, and just uh, finally that remove the name. Uh, yes, you really need to do that if you want to save like if you want to remove that cycle, and you will see many occurrences in standard libraries where this is happening. Okay, so now something really cool. Like uh, what happens, yeah, so you know, you have this, uh, everyone agrees that this is bad, right? If you have been doing Python for some time, you say like, oh, this is bad because you are hiding all the exceptions, blah, 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 but then you might see code like this. And the cool thing about this is that you have a return in the finally, all exceptions are removed. Nothing happened here. How cool is that, right? Uh, some linters will catch this, uh, like uh, um, PyLint. Flykate will even won't, won't bother. But this is, this is bad. Here you're basically hiding all the exceptions and everything that uh, happening. So never, 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 please return in a finally, okay? And uh, you can see that this is an exception of why it's bad, is this uh, beautiful snippet of code. This is just sleeping for five seconds. And whenever, and every five seconds, you're just gonna say I'm unstoppable, right? And it's just gonna return. And the, you didn't know about this, but the whole, on the whole presentation, this was running in the background. And if I manage to pr uh, print the other one, and this is bad, because you won't be able to stop it. If you try to stop, you're just feeding him. It goes faster, right? Like, <laughs> if, you have, if you have a finally with a return, there's no way to get around of it. <laughs> 
Whoop, not that one. Well, that's it. Now that's just time for questions. Yeah. It was. <laughs> A little bit time to, oh, thank you very much. Um, have maybe one or two questions. So, anyone yeah. want to? <laughs> okay. Um, I think you are first, right? Okay. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the presentations. It was very good. Uh, so, I was just wondering first if you, um, what's your opinion on using exceptions for kind of messaging versus actual exceptional behavior? Okay. Uh, because in Python, it's kind of confused between the two. Yeah, so actually I missed that. I should have said that when I go through all the exceptions. You can see that in Python there, there are also exceptions that are just for counter flows. So you can see, for example, stop iteration is just an exception that is used for counter flows. In general, you will see that all the exceptions in the standard library either end with error, which means that they are an error that happened, or they just don't end with error like stop iteration and that's for counter flow. So if you want to use them for that, it's usually, it's usually so many times it's an, it's an overuse, but there might be fair situations where you want that. Okay. So it, it really depends on the use case. Okay, thanks. But yeah, it, it's not as crazy as in C++. <laughs> okay, thanks. I know you're coming from that. <laughs> and uh, what's your next um, holiday destination? What? My next holiday? I'm going to Ukraine with my mother. <laughs> uh, thank you for your great talk. Um, just have a quick question. Is there a technique that lets us uh, yield exceptions? Yield exceptions? Yep. What do you mean with yield exceptions? There are some cases when you have multiple exceptions and you want to get them all. Ah, you see okay. What I mean? yeah. So I, mean, I think there is a work in progress for having like the multi-exception thing on, uh, on Syncio. I'm not an expert on it, but just behind you, you have a core developer that knows a lot about that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank no you. But yeah, I think there are some plans to have something like that. Sure, yeah. Oh, okay, we have three more minutes, so one more question, I think. I'm going to be outside as well. Um, happy to have a coffee. Okay, um, if you don't have any further questions, so that's uh, thanks, Mario, again. <laughs> Thank you.